Now I will talk about the fundamental theorem of calculus. And I'll start by stating the theorem, and then we will work a simple example, and then I'll come back and explain why the theorem must be true. And I'll be presenting a geometrical argument for why it is correct. And it's an argument that I believe will elucidate some important aspects of the theorem. So first, the statement of the theorem. The fundamental theorem of calculus says this. The integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to, and before I say what it equals, let me say this. When you see this right here, the integral from a to b of f of x dx, a mental picture should pop into your head that should look something like this. You've got some function. There's an x-axis and some function of x. And this a and this b, those are x values. So there's some x value a and another x value b. And those serve as lower and upper limits on this area. So this area is the area bound by the function and the x-axis and by these x values a and b. That area is this, the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And the fundamental theorem of calculus says that that is equal to g of b minus g of a, where this function g right here, that function is the antiderivative of function f. So let's take note of that. We'll write where g is the antiderivative. G is the antiderivative of function f. Now the first thing to take note about this is that this isn't simply just a mathematical statement. This gives us a method, a technique, a procedure for calculating this area. And the technique is this. If we have some function f and we need to find the area under the axis between two x values, then we take that function f and we find the antiderivative find the antiderivative of that function and then evaluate that antiderivative at an x value of b and evaluate the antiderivative at an x value of a and then subtract. And that answer, when we do that calculation, that will be the area under the curve. Okay, let's do an example. Here we're told to find the area under the graph of x squared from x equals 1 to x equals 2. So let's make a quick sketch. This graph is going to look something like this, 1 and 2 on our x-axis. And over here, let's go up to 4. And so this graph obviously goes through 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. And let's see if we can sketch in a nice looking parabola there. And what we're trying to find is the area between x equals 1 and x equals 2. And this area looks something like a trapezoid, except the top here is not flat. That's curved. And so that makes it difficult to calculate with ordinary geometrical formulas. But we can calculate this area exactly. Here's our function f. We can find the antiderivative f and, of f, and we'll call that g. And then we'll evaluate g of 2 and g of 1 and subtract. So let's do the integral of x squared dx. So what function has x squared as its derivative? Well, that would be x cubed over 3. So x cubed over 3, that's what we're going to call function g, the antiderivative of f. And we're going to evaluate x cubed over 3 at 2 and at 1 and subtract. And we do that, watch the notation here. We say x cubed over 3, we put a vertical bar and we write a 1 and a 2. And what this means is this expression evaluated with a 2 plugged in for the variable minus this expression evaluated with the 1 plugged in for the variable. So that's just a compact notation for what we're actually doing. So this is going to be 2 cubed over 3 minus 1 cubed over 3. And so that's 8 cubed, I'm sorry, 8 thirds minus 
one third. That's seven thirds. And that's our answer. That is this area under the curve between x equals one and x equals two. And that's exactly correct. That's not an approximation. That is in fact the exact value. And that's just what we did here. We took this function, which was our antiderivative, and we evaluated it at x equals 2 and at x equals 3, and we subtract, and that's our answer.